The difficulty with gazpacho is that no matter how many people you ask how to make it, you'll come up with a million variations, a bit like the tortilla or San Marejo or many of the other recipes that I'm dealing with in this series and that you can also find in this amazing book. De gazpacho no hay empacho. What does that mean? You can't get enough of a good thing. In the northern territories of this planet, you have emergency services to deal with climate change. In the south, we make gazpacho. I'm not going to peel and seed them. This is something you can choose to do if you would like to do it more traditionally and if you've got a week to prepare. One of the choices I do make is when I add the green peppers, which are these rather long ones and not the bell ones that you may be more used to, though the tastes are pretty much the same. I do remove the ends and de-seed these because we have them. When you get to the cucumbers, or what are called pepinos in Spanish, these small knobbly little things, and others that are smooth, you might end up having to just use, in your part of the world, you might only just get what's called a uh, pepino holandes, or a typical cucumber, I suppose, the long, bendy ones uh, wrapped in plastic but you still want to remove the skin. Finally, you've got choices about whether or not to add garlic and onion. Personally, I think these are essential, but some recipes do say that you can leave the onion out and just add a bulb or two of garlic. It all depends on personal taste. I like to add an onion, finely chopped, smallish, not too big, at least four bulbs of garlic to give it that strong flavour because it's that combination of oil, vinegar and garlic that give the kick that your body is looking for when it drinks a glass of gazpacho on a very hot summer's day. So one little tip is to try and remember the proportions you add so if it isn't quite right the first time you can vary it the second. And fundamentally that's the difference between all the different recipes that exist throughout this country. It's about proportions. It's not that one is right and the other is wrong, or one is better and the other is worse. It's really about finding what works for you, what gives you that, mm, I feel rehydrated, I feel cool, I feel ready to carry on in these climatically challenging days. <laughs> So when you've got everything prepared, chopped up here, I've already got a little bit of onion and tomato in there. I'm going to throw it all into the same pot. Which is looking rather full at the moment. Now, if you've seen the San Morejo video, you'll remember that I squeezed the bread out, removing the water before adding it to the mixture. Well, with gazpacho, we're going to try and hold on to some of that water to give it a, a thinner texture and to make it more of a drink. So, instead of wringing the bread out and adding it to the mixture, I'm just going to throw it in with the water in. If 
finally, vinegar. Well, I tend to throw in more than I actually want, which makes it quite strong. But if you don't get enough of it, you don't get that kick with the garlic and the oil. Remember to put the vinegar and anything else in before you add the oil. The oil is going to cover everything and stop it being absorbed. So don't put the oil in first, put it in last. Bit of sea salt, olive oil. And then all that remains. Now at the beginning, it's gonna look like this. And that's because all of the juice in the vegetables has yet to be blended. So don't panic and start throwing in pints and pints of water thinking you haven't put enough in. Just wait. <coughs> so I'm now about halfway through and you can see that a lot of the tomatoes and the pepinos, the cucumbers, have started to break down. And you can see that it's becoming much more fluid. As you can see, it's got more soup-like, but it's still a bit thick. So what I'm going to do is go back to that saucepan that I had the bread in, and I'm going to add a bit more water to it. Not too much, because I don't want to dilute all the taste. And blend a bit more. Now, as it gets to the end and you think you've got the texture right before giving up and sticking it in the fridge for a few hours, do I have a test? What you're looking for, whether or not you can taste vinegar, garlic and the oil together. Once you've got them together in more or less the right portions, it should give you a little bit of a mm, oof. And don't forget to add a little bit of salt if you haven't put any in because in this climate, you do need to replace it. Well, you just take a look at that. Good few days of life-sustaining nourishment there, all ready to go into the fridge, just from that one batch. So the origins of this incredibly simple and life-saving dish are traced back to other cultures. Let me just read you a short paragraph from this excellent book I just happen to have here. The origin of the word gazpacho is uncertain. Some say it may be derived from the Moth Arab word caspa, meaning residue or fragment, possibly referring to the chopping of vegetables into small chunks and bread that are added to the soup. Others have suggested it comes from the Hebrew word gazaz, meaning again to break into pieces. One story about the origins of gazpacho was that it was introduced by Roman road builders who used a basic version consisting of bread, water, oil and garlic to not only keep cool but also nourish themselves during the hot and demanding work building all those straight roads. Serving suggestions, well, Ideally, you would be making this dish between the months of May and October when vegetables have maturity and they have taste. Outside of those months, it's debatable whether they have either. Suggestions, you can either have it in a bowl with croutons and diced vegetables on top, or some bars will serve it in a tall tumbler with ice on top. The ideal way to refresh your body and to restore some of the essential elements that's been lost living in a hot climate. <laughs> Con acabar tu vida, abre satisfecho 